What have I been doing? I've been out here in the shop working with Cousin Dougie putting drivetrains together for these beautiful Mopars. Question is, what have you been doing? If you missed last season, you should check it out. It's pretty killer. Cousin Dougie! Ha ha ha! These last three seasons, our shop has resurrected some of the rarest and most desirable Mopar muscle cars ever to leave the factory. All the while, painstakingly restoring a car that no one, I mean nobody, believed could be done. The one of 108, 446 barrel, four speed shaker hood EV2 Tour Red 1971 Phantom Cuda. Thanks to my new crew and their positive attitude, the nationwide team of top technicians who sacrificed time, money, and heart just to turn back time on this legendary car. But we've got one more car left to deliver. It has been meticulously restored and is now better than the day it was when this one owner car started life. With the decals carefully applied, it's now time for Alyssa to take it out for its maiden voyage. So right now we're in our 1971 Challenger 383 Magnum Automatic. Painted Brinny and our FJ6 Gringo. Having to get you, Barbara. The unburied dead are coming back to life. I'm Mark Warman. And together we bring dead muscle cars back to life. To exactly the way they were on the day they were born. Wait now. Excited? Oh, I really. Oh, there goes our painter, really? Will. Hey, Willie. Remember, you paint great, but I'm a great painter. <laughs> my name's John Buck. I bought my 71 Challenger. And I've liked the car, and I've never got rid of it. It was repainted back in the 80s, and I never liked it. It's been parked, you know. And I called Mark. That's where it kind of all just transpired over the you know, last few years. But you know, I know you haven't heard it, and you haven't seen the look, the rake. Yeah. We got the rake exactly with your Kragers on there. It's just absolutely, it looks good. It looks like the old pictures you showed me yeah, in, the, in the old days. Originally. Yeah. She shouldn't be here. I don't understand what's taking so long. Anyway. He actually asked me to take this out on a test drive before John gets here to do the reveal. So he told me to, you know, take it a couple around the block a couple of times and just get it warmed up. Does anybody know, has, has she asked you? No, no. Or said anything? No, I can text her if you want. Yeah. What my dad doesn't know is that I'm actually going to take my sweet time getting this car back to him because I've, it's been two years since I've had my driving privileges taken away. Um, they have been given back to me recently, and that's awesome, and I appreciate it. But two years? I mean, come on. So I'm just going to make the most out of it. Yeah, you can't hear anything. She's done. She's stolen it. I'll call the cops. It's a fun car to drive. It handles really nicely. Turns really nice. Smooth shifts, amazing. Okay, seriously, let's call the cops because I'm not doing it no more. She every time, no, she does this. It's irresponsible. It's so frustrating for me. You see the I time she, she stole my the block. The block's Did, only. Hey, hey. I hear something. <laughs> There it is, Johnny. <laughs> now take a look at that bad mojo potato. Oh, this is Why is she going 100? <laughs> what are you doing? What is the 
the front seat. I got an orchid today. You got Man, an orchid? she runs good. She can wow. get up and go. I'm in, I'm in the twilight zone. You were supposed to go warm the car up. We've been waiting out here for you. Oh, I bet it's warm. Why are you See, driving that fast down that road? It wasn't that quick. It's like 30-ish. I got bad news for you, Cool Breeze. You just lost your privileges again. No. I can't. You're going 100 miles an hour in a, in a kid zone, you and you got to plant. Let's not act years. up in front of the. Why is there a plant? And is that a 40 Hold ounce on, Dutch even... Brothers? Hey, will you what give me some of the keys? I need to get my stuff out of the trunk. I got thirsty. It's still cold. That tells me you started up here. Alyssa kept saying, you know, she's always grounded, can't drive, you know, she's got her, her privilege pulled. I said, nah, Alyssa, just go out there, have fun. I said, when you get the car, I want to see you drive it. This is remember, this is a Mopar. This is a car that runs. I had to get groceries. And my plant, can you get my plant in the front? It's buckled in, so I'm buckled at first. <laughs> but the only difference is I didn't know if she was going grocery shopping. I thought she was just going around the block. <laughs> I'll be back, John. Well, it's warmed up for you guys. Jonathan? That is the perfect color. It is beautiful, isn't it? And that's the right. That's, that's PPG, green go. That's the right color, FJ6. What do you think, Chief? You want to go for a ride? Are I'm you ready. dying? Are I'm you thrilled? Ready. I'm ready. I'm ready, too. Let's I already do got it. some right, driving go, lessons. You're going to prison. Somebody <laughs> call 911, tell them I got a convict. Blah, blah, blah. Listen to that thing. All right. the power there. Yeah. Uh, okay, that's a residential district. <laughs> I was doing under 25. No, you weren't. <laughs> At no time were you under 25. Nice. <laughs> Dad. <laughs> what happened? You gonna let me out? You're fine. You didn't like it when I started to drift off. Well, you're a little crazy. Something's not all together there in the <laughs> melon. Remember how I told you Bill Goldberg took too many shots to the melon? <laughs> Well, guys, I think you did a hell of a job. Oh, yes, I did. The only thing I was, was telling it bothered me the whole time. Yeah. You know, I was young when I came in, and now when I leave, I'm old. Yeah, so we got we did no, put it on the back burner for last year's SEMA car. I apologize for that. That thing was gorgeous car too, a, a, ton of, a ton of work on that thing. And we're doing another car for Johnny, too. <laughs> 1969 Dodge Charger RT SE 440 four speed 34 Dana EF5. F5. F5, F5, F5. F5 green. Johnny? Hey, Mark, thanks Thank you, very brother. much. I really appreciate it. You're a good man. Yeah. All right, drive that thing carefully, All right. brother. Thanks, guys. All right. See you later. See ya. Pretty car. So Stay tuned, because we are about to begin the final assembly on one of our most popular and yet controversial builds today. One of the official freeway jump cars from the 2005 Dukes of Hazard, the world famous General Lee. What's up, buddy? Yeah, what's up, Will? How's it going, man? Another day. Do you want a hot or a cold coffee, Dave? I'll do a cold. Cold? Yeah, I'm up for ice. I already started here's cold, so. Nice, but I didn't want a hot. Uh -oh. Good morning! There goes the neighborhood. Bring your cups! <laughs> <laughs> so, boss? A little Robin Williams show back for you. Good morning, oh, yeah. Vietnam. Good morning, Vietnam. Honey, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> Don't hit me in the ball. Coffee yet today, and this is how he's acting. You making Java for everybody? A little, yeah. little perk for the team? A little, pick little me up. something something? For being Dave. <laughs> Not a little something Thanks. something, just a little bit okay. of coffee. We're gonna rock it this week. Big Daddy is rocking. The General Lee has been an incredible journey from Will, his paintwork, absolutely beautiful, it truly is. Dave's assembled it to perfection. Uh, the General Lee build's going great. I finally got the Dixie horn installed. I can't wait to get some power to it because I just can't wait to hear what it sounds like. Such an iconic sound. So uh, let's keep our fingers crossed. So we're close to the finish line now, and it's exciting to be right near where I think the car needs to be in just a few days. 
We're gonna put wheels, tires on it. We're gonna get that thing lowered down for the first time under its own suspension, roll it forward so I can get hold of Larry and have him come do the headlight. Today? This is what I'm yeah, today. Is it impossible though? It's no more impossible than throwing a saddle on the back of a shark and going for a ride, okay? It's gonna hurt, yeah, but it can be done. And when it's over, you have some good bragging rights if you're alive. Sounds great. Drink up some coffee. <laughs> I know we can get it done. You know, I work on these cars every day, and I think uh, if we put our minds together and get everybody on the same page, slam dunk, no problem. <laughs> it looks like you've been in here early. Yeah. I'm good. I had, a, yeah, I had a couple of those things a little earlier. Um, I don't care if they get it done or not. Mark's already told me he's got his own plans for me so they can go out there and do the best they can at trying to get it done today, which won't happen. What I want you to do is go pick up my car. I had to take my Challenger Shaker into the dealership to get its 12,000 mile service on it. It's ready to go. Uh, so I'm gonna send him over there, have somebody give him a ride. Here's the extra set of keys that's sitting over at the dealership. Okay. I had the service done to it. Okay. Just drive it really nice and careful. I can key right into that thing with a scanner and see exactly how that car was driven. It'll tell me how many RPMs, when you did it, and how you did it. So your future depends on it. I got the boss's keys, so. Guess I'll go enjoy his challenger for the day. Let's get it on, Willie! Today we're gonna install the graphics on our General Lee. So this is a, it's a series of different graphics. You've got, of course, the flag, which appeared from the very, very first episode of Dukes of Hazard all the way through the end of the movie series. That gets centered in a particular space. I've got the specs of where that goes exactly on the roof. Then on the sides, visible at kind of an eyeline level, are your General Lee callouts. So we have to put those on. The only other decals are the 01, the 01 that go on the doors. I know exactly where those go. So what we're gonna do is start by wiping this thing down with our tack cloth, make sure there's no dust on it, get it rolled up so we can actually work on it. I should say that's first. Then we'll tack it down, then we'll go ahead and do our spray solution on it and start putting that flag on. Okay. Well, finally, good lord. So today I get to work with my dad on the General Lee. We're putting on the decals. I'm excited, this is an iconic car. Just All for the right. record, it's exactly the same way it was when she was a kid. What? Five minutes late, every, fashionably five minutes late. So I'd set the clock five minutes ahead so she'd show up on time. All right, you ready? Let's <laughs> ready do this. Go. All right. If you look at our pictures, of the car before we just had it dipped. They've got the flag quite a bit forward. And I was talking to one of the guys on Facebook that's a huge fan of the show, and he owns one of these cars. He actually helped with the production of some of the cars that went in the, in the movie. He says that there's a four inch reveal from this back ledge to where the decal begins. Uh, installing a decal like, like the roof decal on this, uh, I haven't measured it comparable to like a 71 Cuda billboard, but there's a lot of square inches there. Those are the ones that you can usually get an air bubble in the middle and then it's trapped and you can't get it out. It's it's nice to have some help. And, and I think at this point she's done it enough that she is truly going to be a good help. So that is 51 and a half inches. So what's 51 and a half divided by two? Well, 50 divided by two is 25, so is it 20? 25 and a half, 25 and a half would be 51. 20, so 25 and three, three quarters. quarters. Yeah. 25 and three quarters. Okay, good. Glad my, glad my college money did good for you. Uh, I've installed a lot of graphics and over the years I've actually gotten a pretty good skill for it, I think. You can eyeball it, but undoubtedly when you do eyeball it, somebody's gonna come up with a different set of eyeballs and say, that's wrong. So as far as the flag, it's done. Uh, all I've got to do is pull the backing paper off of it, but I'm gonna wait a couple of days to do that. I'm ready to install the General Lee decals. I'm ready to get the General Lee portion of it in the O1, and then I really feel like the car's gonna be made. I'm not exactly sure why he chose me to be the one to help him with this task. I mean, since I did so well the first time around with Will, I think that just goes to show you that Will was probably the problem. It wasn't me at all. No. Sure? Cause yes, I know that. Then how? I don't know. Why is this happening? I lay it back down. <laughs> wow, we made it far before we had to get my dad. My dad did a great job. It's tough for anybody. Um, but I was a little worried seeing him get up and down to check the top to the bottom. I mean, it looked like he was having a little bit of a tough time. I had to like put my hand out there. I don't know if it has anything to do with age. I mean, he is getting older. 
Well, I, I couldn't begin to guess why Alyssa would say something so cruel as me being old or tired looking when I'm doing one of these. I'm 54, I'm not a kid anymore, all right? The only reason I was having a hard time getting up and down is because these jeans are too tight, all right? I don't know, maybe he needed to get something a little more roomy, but it looked like he was having trouble getting up and down off the ground. Between the area, so, so when I'm getting up, my normal spring area is right when I hit a 90, that's when I pop up, but the jeans were keeping me down. So I didn't have that normal spring to me, that jack-in-the-box. Doop de doop de doop de doop. Pop goes the weasel. So, but I don't know what position you're talking about. You're 13 years old and you look 60. So. <laughs> you know, this is that part where, yeah, I have all my measurements, right? But it's nerve wracking when you've got, you know where it goes on one door, but now you've got to mirror image that. So there's some perspective, there's some standing back, there's some making sure, because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what the measurements are, if these things don't see it right, you lose. Which unique feature came standard on all AAR CUDAs and TA Challengers? Was it the 340, three two barrel Holly setup, the side exiting megaphone exhaust, the hinged fiberglass hood, or all of the above. Stay tuned after the break for the answer. So what unique feature was standard on all AAR CUDAs and TA Challengers? The answer is D, all of the above. These cars were very unique for the time, for any manufacturer. They feature a lot of things that are unique to their particular model, such as the side striping. Additionally, here's one for you. It's the only car to have left the assembly line with two different size tires on it. An E6015 on the front and a G6015 on the back. I'm gonna put my final coat on the Roadrunner and then head out to get Mark's car. I go in there, I put three or four coats on, depends how good the coverage is, and then I walk away and I'm done. Uh, this car isn't a base coat, clear coat, it's just a single stage. You know, the body guys, the car came in and it was a driver. It had been restored, I think, 15 years ago, so it was just time to do it right. I just finished the Roadrunner. The thing looks amazing. The color laid down perfect. The bodywork looks perfect. Um, well, it'll sit for a couple of weeks. I'll do a buff on it, and that car will be heading over to Dave. Of all people in this world, I have no idea why they would bring Stan. What's happening, Stan? Um, Mike sent me over to pick you up. He's annoying, he has a funny looking mustache, and he drives a box car. And what? This. We're taking this to the dealership? Yeah. So I'm hoping this is a joke, but it's probably not. You drove over here to take me out to the dealership in this? Yeah. Is it safe? It's a Ford, it's better than anything. Oh, All right, well. What? <laughs> That's my la laser-sighted, sawed-off shotgun. The only people that should have shotguns in their car are cops. He's not a cop. Public transportation would be safer than riding with Stan in a shotgun. It's, it's for protection. You never miss, ever. <laughs> this is a death trap. And it smells like pee. And not just like any pee, it's just that dirty old man pee. It works. Does it run? It starts. And I have to go all the way out to Eugene in this. Yeah, lucky me. I did a couple minutes ago. See? I don't break nothing. What do you mean, don't break nothing? It's hard to get parts for this thing. Just don't get us killed. Ready, right, Royal? You ready? Yeah, you ready? I'll go inside and you hand me parts. And okay. We'll knock this baby out. Yeah, yeah, let's start with the. Portion go? Okay. 
It's really nice when you're prepared. We got everything laid out on the table, all the right fasteners. It always goes smooth. And working with Royal's great because he knows what what I need and when I need it. And so it just it's like a, a well-oiled machine. So yeah, we shipped this out real quick, and it just came back in, as you can see on there. Oh, nice. 104th day of 1969. So it's right the correct. Wiper motor on there. They did a beautiful job restoring it. Oh, yeah. It's really great to be working on it generally. It's one of those that we're behind on, but now that it's at this point, it'll it'll go really well. Second most important tool in the toolbox. What's the most important tool? Coffee cup. <laughs> Thought you were gonna say a flask. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned. Coming up. We're installing the drivetrain in our 1969 Dodge Charger freeway jump car, the General Lee. We got to pull in here at this uh, gas station. Yeah. Because you picked me up with no gas? I picked you up with no gas. Maybe that's something you could have done you, before. You brought your credit card? Well, I have one. Yes, but Good. what's that have to do with going here? Well, the reason reason I brought you and this car is it needs gas. So put gas in it. That's what we're doing. All right. So you go put gas in it. Pretty good. Need it filled. Fill it? Yes. Regular? Yes. Are you cash or card? Card. Card? Are you paying out here or inside? Uh, out here. <laughs> Man. <laughs> what are you doing? Get my receipt. I got the receipt right here. Yeah, well, I have my own. It's it's right here. Yeah, you have it. We make a copy of it. Yeah. All right, you got $52 in fuel, which I'll have to turn in to get reimbursed, obviously. Quickest way to the freeway is that way. I have, I have a stop to do. I just want to get out there and get Mark's car picked up and get back to work. Well, it's You're not. going up here and going left, but we need to go back the other way. Yeah, there's an entrance to the freeway up there. Um, so what's, what's the deal with Alyssa? What's going on? What do you mean, what's the deal with Alyssa? What's going on? Well, Anything going on with Alyssa? Um, working at the shop and spending time with her boyfriend and kids. A boyfriend? Yeah, she's got a boyfriend. Oh, man. How come I never see him? Because you never come around. Oh. Well. You're out running your errands. Yeah. We are about to begin the final assembly on one of our most popular and yet controversial builds to date. One of the official freeway jump cars from the 2005 Dukes of Hazard, the world famous General Lee. All right, we've been working on the General Lee of all cars. You know, I've been looking forward to this for a long time. Uh, knowing that the car was here, it's, it's a privilege to work on it. But we're actually doing some plumbing underneath of there, so we're gonna put in the brake lines and the fuel lines and the fuel tank. Got Alyssa working with me today. It's, it's always fun to work with Alyssa. She does a great job, and so looking forward to it. I kind of feel like I've gotten to my stride now. I've been working here for a couple years, and so I'm not a newbie. I feel like I've done you know, most of the tasks that I'm asked to do today, I've done them before. I don't anticipate any problems that Dave and I haven't encountered before, and I think that it should go smoothly. All right, so it's been a couple months since we did one of these. Will you give me like a little refresher course on how to get started? Of course, yeah, we got our, our three lines here. This is our main fuel line, which is the big one. Okay. 3-8 size. See the and difference? then this other one is our vapor return line. Okay. Or you know, fuel vapor return line. It's quarter inch, so it's a little bit smaller. We're gonna feed in the main fuel line first, and then we'll put in the quarter inch line right alongside of it. It'll piggyback it all okay. the way down the car. And then our brake line, they got the spring on it. That one there will go on the opposite side of the car, and then we'll put it in same way back to front. Okay. Okay. So but we're gonna put on our main 
main, main fuel, fuel line, line first. first. Okay. Exactly. And you can see they mark all these out. They got to put them in a box because they can't make a box, you know, 14 feet long. <laughs> yeah. So they bend them and they got on here where to straighten them at. So they put two stickers in there so you know this right here has got to come out. So Which I, is awesome. I mean, yeah. people Isn't doing nice? this at home would have no idea where exactly. to start. Exactly. Yeah. And folks buying these lines, this is the place to buy them from. So we're going to go this way. See, if we had this rear axle on here, it would be right here and we would have to pop the shock off and try to fold this thing up in the air to try to get it down and around all at the same time. That would be ridiculous. Uh, it's so much easier uh, to put it in without the rear axle in there. The engine and transmission is, is doable because it's not really crowding where the lines feed in, uh, but having that rear axle out makes a world of difference because it's so much easier to feed that line in. Now right here we're way off. Yeah, this is way funky. So. I want to try to pull this one here. We kind of ran into a jam with a 3 8 uh, fuel line. Usually they kind of hug into that frame rail, wrap around, and then it just kind of dumps out right at the fuel tank after kind of reviewing another car, going back up there. It looks really good now. There you go. Just kind of guide that. There you go. Perfect. It's so nice to do this with two people. It's like it's going to match up really well. Nice. That looks good. So perfect. So that's it. We're done with that for now. So let's just move right into our brake line. Yeah. See this, this old brass block right here? This is called portioning valve. Uh -huh. You're actually going to screw that line right into the bottom there. OK. But that's perfect. How's it lining so, up? That looks good. These are like the same clips we're using for the fuel line, but these are for the brake lines because they're a little bit smaller. This part right here, you can kind of see, is, is set up like a little snapper that snaps into the hole of the car, and then this here will actually accept your line, it'll snap right into that. So now that we've got the fuel lines and the brake lines installed, we're gonna jump over to the fuel tank and get that in there. Yeah, we got the fuel tank installed, now the best part, the iconic 69 Dodge Charger fuel cap. Let's see what that looks like. Wow. How cool is that? That is pretty fancy. Look at that. That is awesome. And it is really cool, you know? It's it's chrome, it looks good, it is cool. But I mean, that's it. Like, that's what we're freaking <laughs> out. That's what sets this car apart from this car. So it, it's just kind of interesting to me, you know, the, the, thing, yeah. the little things that you guys get excited about. I'd like to get a soft ice cream cone. You want something? No, well, I don't. Uh, no, that'll do. All right, dollar sixty-nine. It will. Thank you. Thanks. You have a good one. You too. Oh dear God! Can we go? Dude, I'm almost done. You want me driving with this in my hand? Yes, I do. We've already had to stop to get gas, and now you're stupid ice cream. Well, I'm almost done. I can drive half the shit on your on your shirt. Let's just get me to the dealership and be okay. done with, with okay. this whole fiasco. Right, let's go. The 1968 Plymouth Roadrunner came standard with a 383 HP and had an optional 426 Hemi. True or false, the very first year you could get a convertible top in the Plymouth Roadrunner was 1970. The answer coming up after the break. So how many of you said the 1970 Plymouth Roadrunner was the first year to have the convertible top? Well, unfortunately, you were wrong. 1969 was the first year the Plymouth Roadrunner was available with a convertible top. In 1968, when it was introduced, it was actually only available in a two-door post. So the hard top was not available yet, let alone the convertible top. And by 1970, the end of that year, that was the last of the convertible tops in the Plymouth Roadrunner. So y'all learned something. We're installing the drivetrain in our 1969 Dodge Charger 
freeway jump car, the General Lee. Now we're gonna put the rear end in first. Why do we do the rear end first? Yep. The weight of the motor. Dave? Why do we Counter, do the rear end That's first? right, counterbalance the weight of the engine. Very there good, go. Will. Back in the day, when a guy like you would tear one of these cars apart, he never put it back together right. He butchered it. Then when it wouldn't go together, he called his dad to come save the day. Yeah, we're talking to you. I'm back, and don't even ask me how the trip went. Me, yeah. I had nothing. I had a dead dad, a tumor in my foot, Osgood slaughter. This is season eight. Well, season I eight, don't bring my dad back from the dead. No, it doesn't, but I guarantee you this, the same story from season one, they don't care about. I'm not interested in listening to any of Mark's stories about his not having crayons, his dad dying at a young age. I'm just, I'm not having any of it. Okay, did I tell you about the crayons? Yes. That was like season four. I, I'm just trying to get this job done and get out of here. The eight crayon Yeah, pack. I had the built-in sharpener. The I know you did. Chartreuse. Yep. yep. I had it all. No. So now instead of putting this whole thing together, we're talking about a stupid gas cap. What? You yeah. didn't care about the gas cap? I mean, I thought it was cool. <laughs> I'm starting to think she was playing with My Little Ponies. I prefer the word legendary. Instead of muscle cars. You pull up to Can a gas station. Can you stop talking for two seconds? Here we go. You pull up to a gas station, right? You get out of your car. Here's oh, what you hear. I don't even have to get out of my car. I have a little button right. that I push yeah. and pop. Yeah. First you push the button down. Check that out. It goes clunk. clunk. Then flip, flip. And then shh. You know what the shh is? When you open a beer? The girl behind you with her panties falling on the ground. That's that disgusting. gas cap was a panty what? dropper. It was. If you were ever looking for panties, you go to a gas station and they were all over the floor. You act like you're like a rock star. I was for panties. For panties. I'm not saying, you, I said if it was. No, nobody goes out looking for panties. What if it's Valentine's Day and you ain't got no scratch and you need to get something on real nice? I can't even believe it. You don't round up some used pantalones? Dad. No. Disgusting. <laughs> used? Disgusting. Well, they don't poop in them. You don't know. You don't, I don't know where know. these are. You're these right. are derelict underwear you're finding everywhere. I wear Der boxer underwear. I just don't know why we can't get along a little better. Because you won't allow it. I was just saying that back on the gut, you know, when I'd cruise up on the gut, the, the panties were falling everywhere, and I wasn't a litter bug, right? Give a hoot, don't pollute. Remember Woodsy Owl? So, you know, I just kind of picked them up as I went along and didn't keep them. Like in a drawer underneath my other stuff so Mom wouldn't see it. I'm saying that's what I didn't do. Bang against that shaft. <laughs> With the rear end assembly bolted in, tightened down on the back of the car, we can now move to the front and install the drivetrain. It looks like it's actually centered pretty good. Dave lined it up. Well, if you'd be a lamb fry <laughs> and go to the back. I will not. Will you be a partner and go to the back? No, I will not. Will you be a friend? Yeah. Oh, oh. Okay. I'll pull right, I'll pull. You're better friends with him than yeah. I am. I'll pull it. All right, ready? Let's pull that shaft. Right on. Thanks. Going down. Oh, man, this is so tough. It's close when for it's, an well, initial. Once we lower yeah. it down a little bit, it's we'll have close. a little better idea. Let's, get a, let's do it. I think it's just got to go that way a little bit. But yeah. Yeah. So, Will, do you want to run the hoist? That's fine. How are we doing? Is that that was it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's it actually went in. Huh? huh? Okay, are we ready to put transmission cross member bolts in? Yep, ready. All I got right. Let's see. God dang it. You got bolts? This is the exact. Your dad, let, let me help you. I don't need any help. <laughs> oh, come on, come well, on. you're making yeah. it worse. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> you almost took his bolts down. I don't need help getting up. I'm not a hunt. Why are you laughing? Because that was awesome. Because you almost took her down. Well, yeah, because I'm a hunt. Yeah, you didn't need any help. Solid muscle. Yeah. Anyway. A solid <laughs> muscle. <laughs> when Mike gets back, remind him to come see me because I'd like to discuss why it is when we have. All the nuts, all the bolts, all the fasteners supplied to us by AMK in a box package and ready to go why they are on the drivetrain like I require them to be. Because people follow rules or... People die. People die. People die. Death. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, these kits are awesome. They got a complete master oh, list of everything. Not too bad. Would Here you look under the back, Dave, and see if the U joint straps are on, or do you know? I don't know. I right, take a look. Do you need help reading any of that? Let's see. I don't need any help reading anything. All Thank right. you very much. I need to find the transmission. U joint straps are in place. Hardware. Dave? Yes, sir. I think these are too big. These are the 69 style. Okay. They just double check and see if they'll go through the cross member. I think so because we got that uh, 70. Here's the deal. Everything on the car, the car is actually a 70 that was built for the movie. That won't go. Yeah. 
So this is a 69 kit that I just grabbed and the transmission cross member bolts. These here, they're a lot fatter in 69 than they are in 70. So I gotta, now I gotta go rob a 70 kit to make sure I have the right ones. These are the correct bolts with captive washers on them with the correct finish, the correct head. And these, this spread out the weight evenly. They'll work kind of like a washer to distribute the weight evenly. This is factory hardware. And all we gotta do yeah, to get this car like raised up in the air is hands. one bolt on each side. We don't even need the nuts on right now. Okay, so you got one bolt in on that side, is that right? Yep, yeah, okay. I got her started, so. No reason good. to fight it down here when we can go up in the air. Nope, she looks good. Oh, Jesus. Oh, here we go. I don't need the freaking help. What <laughs> is your problem? You're just struggling a little bit. No, I'm not struggling. It's these pants, okay? These pants are tight in certain areas so they can show off my bootay. <laughs> You understand that? Oh my god. You have no butt. I do have a but what do I have? You a have hole a hole in my back? Yes, you have a hole where your butt should so be. So I just have to lay down on the toilet and take a dump because I got no butt cheeks. Yes. Well, I'm a ridiculous human being. Yes. Maybe you should get your pants size. These, no, these are my size. Those are not your size. That is disgusting. <laughs> what the hell was that? Can you That's my bootay. Go, last one. Look at that, huh? And you should be nice tonight yeah, because yeah, he does great. everything that you don't want to do. Usually we anymore. gotta fight those. You want me to add a booty somewhere? to my dance? Yeah, I'd love, I'd you love to see that. Booty to my dance? What is that? That's the booty you're gonna add? It looks like you're trying to shake one off. I'm not trying to shake one out. I don't even have to. Did I do that? <laughs> Did you just pee all over too? I think I wet. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay. If you'll get me the drive shaft that I gave you. Okay. Beautiful. Sure. What is go. that? This is a drive line. Well, I know it's a drive line. Why? Ooh, I, it's not for this car. Yeah, Why was, would you paint it black? You told me to paint it black. Why would I have you paint it black when we never paint any of them black? You're the Mopar guy. I'm not. You said we'll that's paint right, this that's drive right. line black. I wouldn't say paint it black. You said paint it black. I'm it's not black. Mick Jagger. I'm not going to say paint it black. That was actually pretty good. Yeah, I know. That's kind of jokes I tell. But it just still doesn't put the clear. It's a right. natural finish originally. This, right, but this one went black. You said, I'm just going by what you said. I have no clue what's supposed to be. Well, if you want it natural, you should say, hey. We need I to get this car on the ground and rolled forward. Yeah, you know why? You got that down pretty good, don't you? Do what? Putting grease on this? I don't know what that Lube means. Lube it up shafts. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Oh boy. <laughs> I'm going to put this one in the car for now. OK. But. After Larry's done, before this car gets shipped, it comes back out, and you're gonna strip all that paint off of there, and you're gonna put a satin clear, like you have the other 150 drive shafts. I have another 150. Oh, did you have acne as a kid? You got grease up your nose, too. Oh, boy. Ooh. Okay. A drive shaft? Yeah. Oh, for the love of <laughs> human fecal matter. Why have you done this, William Scott? Do you see the problem? It's too short. Yeah, that's the story of your life. It's not mine, okay? You, uh, you want God me to save the day and go get the right one? <coughs> no, I'll go get the... What? Pay back some <laughs> This one. Here you go. Oh, I see. Yeah. Well, maybe next time, instead of making me spend a half a freaking day with Stan, you'll... What are you uh, even talking about? If you're going to send me to go hang out with Stan, I'm going to give you that's the least I could do. If I got to go out and spend the last two hours with Stan, come back here, spend the next hour with him, listening to his comedy, yeah, then paybacks are for four hours. I didn't send you anywhere. Freaking ice cream and going to Why his house. Why are you laughing? I'm not laughing. Why would you hang out with Stan for four hours? Because apparently he uh, he was the one taking me out there. Please tell me, which would make everything today so much better. <laughs> that he drove you in that rolled over, kick in, 30 years late to the game, Thunderbird, with his middle name on the license plate, Delwin. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my God. You know what, I'm glad you got the wrong drive shaft. Right? <laughs> All right, well there's no dealing with you today. My shift's ended. I've, I did what I was told. They still got the car to finish up. I'm done for the day. Oh, yeah, hey, why don't you hand me that screw off the dash?
everybody hitting on all eight cylinders. Speaking of that, we got the drivetrain installed in our generally, our beautiful generally, back from the dead. Couldn't have done it without you. you. Well, you, you guys got it done. Well, you helped a little bit. Yeah, at the end, because you sent me off with Stan to go pick up your car. <laughs> yeah, you know how many stops we had to make to get your stupid car? I'm gonna guess, first off, he made you put fuel in his rig. I had to pay for Pretty it, good. yeah. <laughs> and I paid for it. He needed ice cream. Oh, soft serve with the walrus mustache. Right, but, but even before that, I had to pay for it. Just when I thought we, we got the gas, got the ice cream, we're done. We have one more stop to make. I just have to stop here at home for What a are we stopping for? I just, uh, well, I'm right are here. Are you serious? I'm right here at my house. For what? The ice cream? Ice cream hit. What could you possibly have to do? Well, hurry up. You gotta be kidding me. You know, we actually hung in the car a little bit longer after you left. I know you got a little bit pooptified over the whole Stan Lynch lactose dung thing. Well, that's ridiculous. Which I've been around it before. It's, it's just not ridiculous. good. He killed six flies in one shot. Just showed up right after you left. The original vector wheels that were on the car when it was wrecked. Let's put the wheels on it. Yeah, I love that's the vector what I'm wheels. To. They were bent, they were mauled. I sent them to a guy, he did a beautiful job straightening them. These are unilugs, they're a shouldered nut. You see the slots in the wheel? You have to start these. You have all five of them started. We're gonna slide the wheel forward, outward, so that it slides over the shanks, and then we'll tighten them down one at a time. Okay. And that really pretty much puts the icing on the cake. The uh, cherry on the ice cream. <laughs> you know I'm saying? The poop. Fan. <laughs> Anywho, we also fired off the beautiful, amazing sounding Dixie horn, which I really, really think is a cool feature. Yeah, Listen, there's a it. chrome button up there. Let's hear if the General Lee oh, horns one? work like they are yep. supposed to. You ready? Do it. Do it. Once. What's horn after horn after horn after horn. You just do it once. I think that's the best part about the car, not well, the fuel door. Do you remember General Lee doing it over and over again? <laughs> <laughs> so you have to admit, overall, at the end of the day, past the dead flies and the dookie and all that stuff, we had a really productive day. You know, Dave and Rollo, Rollo Pony, Puffy, we call him. Puffy, yeah. He got the power brake booster, the master cylinder, they installed mm -hmm. the wiper motor on it. Later, Dave and Alyssa got the undercarriage lines put in it, such as the brake lines and the fuel lines. Right. They installed the fuel tank, the fuel filler, the legendary NASCAR-inspired fuel cap. Actually, has the word fuel written in it. Alyssa didn't like it. Finally, with no help, no mark, you promised yourself you wouldn't do that. With very little help, from William T. Scott Tiago. We got the drive train. Very stuff. little help. There was very little help. You, you were that's out. That's self-inflicted. You were on your first date with Lynch. You sent me on to, out to do that. Hey. So I would have helped out a, a bunch I'm, more if it wasn't for your- Piece of advice, do what you don't. want with it. Second date, no ice cream. Piece of advice, not listen to you. Uh, I think that's a pretty good piece of advice.